together. Because if the promise was that you will die, the last statement should have been, Oh God, you have fulfilled your promise. And I am so happy. So it was a cry, not of desertion. It was a cry of reminder. A sort of prayer. Sometimes children know their mothers can never desert them, yet they cry out, Oh my mother, why have you deserted me? You know, why have you abandoned me? So that plays the trick. Something within the mother moves so quickly that she rushes back to the child. So we interpret that last cry as a reminder to God of His promise. And we believe that the cross failed to kill. And the following incidents, to which I refer later, support our point of view. And this makes us so happy that Jesus Christ was a true prophet of God. He was beloved by God. He was never deserted. And death could never conquer him even for a moment. This is our interpretation.
establish this relationship, I will give you some explanation of why we believe differently from you. Although you should have been the, been the authentic spokesman for Christianity as it happened, what right do we have to become the authentic spokesman on the fact of Christ crucifixion? Why should our point of view be accepted and preferred over your point of view, while apparently you belong to Jesus Christ more closely than we do? I mean, that is apparent. But I do not accept that contention. Our point of view, our philosophy on religion is different. And we do not draw our demarcation lines between religious, religions at sources. But I will come to that later. First of all, well, this is a very interesting point which I want you to understand. <coughs> but the point I want to make is that our interpretations concerning what happened on the cross and after it are a well-related story which goes even back to the past. And as a whole, when I put it to you, what happened, what should have happened, and why misunderstandings arose later on, then I hope you will be better and be able to understand our point of view. And you will be able better to sympathize with our point of view. Because it's not just a hocus pocus or imagination. I know. It is based entirely on different interpretations of the other scriptures. This is understood. After that, I will now come right to the last text. Please come on to what the Christians, the Jews, the Christians, so we are going to learn from Jesus what should be the right way for the teaching of the Christians and Jesus what should be the right way for the teaching of Jesus. They are not going to be able to do this. They are not going to be able to do this. They are going to be able to do this. They are going to be able to do this. Det syn på Jesus og hendelsen som blir Jesus, som avviker da fra de kristne. Og de mener at vi har da sammen et rett for så da til å tolke skriftene som de kristne har. Og du får jo tolk, etter vår oppfatning, en fortolkning av skriftene. Jeg håper at min oversettelse er noen under korrekt, og hvis det er noen som mener at jeg gjør noe gale ting, må vi bare... <laughs> well, I don't know whether it's right or wrong, so I can't be angry with you anyway. <laughs> I have to have a blind trust. <laughs> well, we look at the fact of crucifixion, starting our observation from what happened before. We have some signs, telltale signs, appearing in the New Testament before the event of crucifixion. Two among them draw my attention in particular. Number one, that Jesus promised his people, peace be upon him. We say peace be upon him because Islam teaches us to say that with every man whom we love and who has passed away. So this, uh, this is my explanation of this repeated saying, peace be upon him. So we notice that he promised his disciples that he was going to, abandon, to, to desert them for the sake of lost sheep of Israel, of the house of Israel. And uh, this is well understood that by the lost sheep he meant those tribes who had earlier migrated from the mainland, that is Judea, and uh, only two tribes out of twelve were left behind in Judea, and at the time of the appearance of Jesus Christ, they were the two tribes whom we addressed. So, according to our rebuilding of the events, we know Jesus Christ was a messenger to all the Israelites, not only